If you're gonna use urine in the garden, this is the miracle recipe for getting the greatest results and reducing your risks by the largest extent. And this is probably hands down one of my most requested videos. I honestly think it's because I have the soil science background. Working in soil science along with having a degree in soil science makes my opinion somehow weighted <laughs> in this discussion. And that is, can you use urine in your garden? So urine is urea. I'm sure many of you already found this out. And because of its urea content, this means it has ammonia, and ammonia has nitrogen. And so people automatically see the connection and think to themselves, I can use my urine to fertilize said plants. And you're not wrong, but you also may not be right. <laughs> so today's video, we're gonna go over how to use urine in your garden if you chose to use urine in your garden and some things you may want to watch out for if you choose to use this method including dilution factors and some other problems that may exist so first off the concentration of urea in urine depends on the species of the animal the human, how much water they consume, or how many vegetables even they consume in a day. For me to give you a dilution factor or, or to give you any information on this that is incredibly accurate and pinpointed to your scenario is pretty much nearly impossible. So keep everything I'm saying with some reservation and do your own research <laughs> into this. Now, there's no way for you to send your urine off to figure out what it is because even day to day, it's going to change. So. Do, do keep that in mind. One thing I do know is my husband and his friends love trucks. That is a grain truck and that is a 1954 Fargo and that is my husband's hobby there. It is quite literally a cutoff line of Bob's yard and my garden on this side. And then I do get the rest of the yard, but regardless, we have two very different hobbies. However, this truck work comes with some beer drinking and said beer drinking and me saying no greasy men in my house means that flower bed back there with my tomatoes most definitely is getting fertilized with urea so with that in perspective yes i do technically use urine as a fertilizer in my garden uh, that is undiluted and i don't really see the effects of it uh, in a damaging sense because of how large the garden is and where it's placed. Now, if it was in a container, I'd probably see these issues amplified because of the soil volume and the intensity in which that garden is planted. I probably don't see too much of it. So the reality is, yes, I do technically fertilize my garden with urine. Now, that garden is a raised bed with a ton of heavy feeding tomatoes in it and it is soil it is not soilless meaning peat or coconut coir or compost it is actual soil so that means i have a better buffer for that urine to be absorbed even though it's undiluted and me not see any negative effects on the plants planted in that space now, if we had a plant potted in a container, soilless medium that already has uh, some slow release fertilizer in the form of compost or granular, whatever the case is, and then I went to go put undiluted urine on it, I would do a lot of harm to my plants. So do keep that in mind when choosing where to apply the urine in your garden. A raised bed or in-ground uh, garden using soil, probably, going to be just fine doing an undiluted solution if you are in a container with soilless medium then i would heavily suggest a dilution which we'll talk about here in a little bit big disclaimer here urine can contain e coli urine is not sterile despite very popular belief that it is it is not a uti is caused by e coli <laughs> so urine can contain e coli Meaning, if you were to fertilize with urine, diluted or undiluted, and it splashed on your cucumbers and then you ate said cucumber or tomato, you could end up with E. coli. So do keep that in mind. If you're gonna use urine in the garden, maybe don't use it on a plant that you were going to harvest from in the very near future. Test it on things that you're gonna be growing 
for the next little bit. Second disclaimer, if you take medications, in particular hormones, birth control, this will go into your garden. Now, the plants cannot uptake a hormone. No, that is very true. So it will end up in your garden, so keep that in mind. If you're gonna use urine, you're gonna end up with birth control or whatever medications you're taking in your garden soil, your soil solution. These can't be taken up by the plants, but just a disclaimer, I mean, they could somehow harm your microbes. That's all I'm gonna say. Now you guys know me, and you know I like to do research. <laughs> so of course, I decided to research what dilution is best. And it ranged anywhere from a one to one, so one cup water, one cup urine, all the way to one cup urine, three cups water, so one to three uh, dilution ratio. And again, this is hard because if it's more yellow, then it it's likely to contain more urea than something that's clear in nature. So you have a clear urine, you could probably get away with a one to one. If something's a little bit more yellow, you probably want to lean to more of a one to three. You know what I mean? So keep that in mind. Um, if you're nervous about it, I would go for a one to three. If you're dealing with a potted enclosed system, so pots and soilless medium, coconut coir, peat, compost, I would lean to a one to three dilution. If we're doing in ground soil raised bed, soil, soil, whatever the case is, I would go for a one-to-one, -one, so one cup of water, one cup of urine. If you're going to use this on greens, lettuce, spinach, arugula, cabbage, anything, anything like that, don't use it. That's my recommendation. Do not use urine on any sort of leafy green. Kale, collard greens, mustard greens, you name it. It would be just too difficult in my mind to really ensure it's sterilized. I would only use it on things like tomatoes and peppers. I would be even cautious about root vegetables, beets, carrots, potatoes, uh, things like that. Sunflowers are a good one. Uh, flowers are just fine, but or perennials, trees, shrubs, whatever the case is. But I would stay away from leafy greens or herbs, any sort of like parsley or basil or sage, you name things like that. I would stay away from using a uh, urine water dilution. So if you're gonna use urine in the garden, this is my recipe to really ensure you get the biggest bang for buck, both in nutrients, but also in reducing your potential risks or exposure to the harmful aspects. That is to ferment the urine before you use it. So the fermentation of urine sounds disgusting, but it's actually not that bad. So what you would do is you'd put undiluted urine into an airtight container, so a bucket or something of that sort. You could add compost if you wanted to. So you could add some fresh compost into the mix, but you can just do straight up urine, nothing else added, no sugar, no nothing. From there, you could choose to allow this to sit for three months. You could let it sit for up to a year. General consensus from most of the studies I looked at is if you allowed your urine to ferment for up to 12 months, it actually drastically decreased the bacterial load, so E. coli, all the way to all the other harmful ones out there, and it actually also increased the level of bioavailable nitrogen, meaning it made it a more powerful product. Now from there, what you would do is you would take that fermented or composted urine and then add it to water. Don't add this to your compost or anything like that. That really high nitrogen is not gonna benefit any sort of composting method that's taking place, but it will benefit your plants. So what you would do is you just do a simple one-to-one, -one, again, for in-ground raised soil beds, not soil less. If you're using a compost, a peat, a coconut coir, and a raised bed or container, that's when you would do a one to three uh, dilution. So one cup of urine to three parts of water. Now, because it's urea, that means it's all nitrogen, no phosphorus, no potassium, you may choose to put in a phosphate rock or um, something else into the mix if you wanted to supplement with it. Typically speaking, or classically speaking, most soils in North America are not um, depleted in phosphorus or potassium, and that's particularly true if you're just using a regular compost, manure, or fertilizer in your soil. 
So those are all things to keep in mind. And whenever applying nitrogen, I'm going to go over this in, a, in another video here in the very near future, you want to actually stop using that nitrogen fertilizer in the middle of August. And you want to typically try to apply this beginning of May, two weeks before you plant, the July 1st mark when things are really starting to kind of take off and germinate. And then actually you want to skip from May to all the way to July. Just let June, let things kind of do their own thing, get things started. And just before things start flowering, beginning of July-ish, you want to do a second application. And then your last application is going to be just mid kind of August area. So I hope this helped you guys out when it comes to using urine in your garden. I know it's bizarre and I will talk to you guys next time. Hi, look at this guy. Look at this guy. <laughs> Mr. Gardening in Canada for you guys. <laughs>